You are listening to DC on Screen. I have exciting news. Mm-hmm. And I guess this will this can start DC on Screen. Oh. Uh, originally, my the plan was for me and my wife to watch my adventures with Superman together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That has not happened. I mean, my plan was to watch it alone, and that has not happened either. Right. Yeah. Um, so she's out of town mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Again. So if you're listening, honey, yes, that was resentment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, but I, I've been given the go ahead to, to start without her, to watch it without her, uh-huh. and to report my my leanings, whether I think it's, she'll enjoy it or not. I'm a pretty good judge of whether or not she'll like a thing. Yeah, yeah, you usually get on point there. I think and she'll be like, "What do you think about that?" I'm like, "Ah, oh, that was awesome. I fucking loved it." She's like, "Sweet," and I'm like, "No, you'll hate it." <laughs> Oh, I had boring. a great time. It was all I did the entire weekend. Oh, should I watch it? No. Over your dead body. I'm like, about a third of it was takes place in Victorian England. You're going to hate it. Yeah. <laughs> or I'll be I, like, I have the also cinematography was so pretty. Like, no, I'm, I just, I watched like seven episodes and just <laughs> fuck this thing. I can't do it. Well, I mean, is it, does it that, is it that bad? You'll love it. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be the thing you talk about for six months. I hate every second. Like, yeah. I mean, look, my wife and I, we agree on a lot of TV shows, a lot of media. Mm-hmm. Uh, we enjoy a lot of the same things. Oh, your Venn diagram is very overlapping. But, you know, there are those things that I adore that she just will not yeah. abide. Yeah. She's just, nope, this was boring. This is, first it was black and white. Then they were in Victorian England and... <laughs> And then instead of dialogue, they just showed me pictures. Yeah. Of course, you're talking about Andy Griffith show. Or, you know, like, <laughs> well, it was all you very pretty. Was black and white, and then they went to England. <laughs> it was all very pretty, but they were all speaking Japanese, and I had to read subtitles. And I'm not going to read. <laughs> I'm trying was the to watch it. season. <laughs> so, you know, important. What is, what is, was there a, I think there's a comedian. That says is uh, what what you like is not as important as what you hate together. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember who that was. It was a... Oh, I don't know that phrase, but there's some truth to it. Oh yeah, yeah. What you both like is not nearly as important as what you both hate. There's a large stretch of that phrase that makes sense in parenting terms. Oh yeah, like of course, of course you love her, of course you hate her. <laughs> uh-huh okay i thought you meant like in terms of like the relationship you have with your child and not like how you and your wife feel about your child oh i meant i meant both okay yeah by the way uh if if you don't know us i'm dave this is jason hi so that's the introduction now mm-hmm. <laughs> welcome in <sighs> just stripping it all away mm-hmm are you good with stripping it away? I yeah. feel like you're good stripping it away. Yeah, sure. I mean, I do okay. anyway. I basically just like sit around and wait for you to open the episode. Yeah. Yep. So we've we've got a lot of DC stuff to talk about. It's been a few weeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Since we did a news episode. Let's let's get right into trailer one. Oh. Which one do you want? Is is that what we're doing? Yeah. I just call it trailer I, one to give you like full <laughs> full width and breadth on which one you picked. All right. Well, I mean, well, you the me first like 18 thing, trailers. The first thing, yeah, I did. I sent you a lot of trailers, but that wasn't what I was going to open with. No. Okay. And better. Yeah. There's still a little bit of structure here, Jason. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the pause was my confusion. I know. It's my fault. Um, so, yeah, it looks like we've got uh, a release window for Creature Commandos. Oh, lovely. And it's coming this December. Which will be about six months before Gun Superman. I'm always torn when someone says December. Like, God, please, just first half. Uh, I so mean, I it's have only time like, to think about it. I think it's only like eight episodes. That's all. I just mean like the last half of December is always crowded. Yeah. Well, I got news for you. They have been releasing like release dates. Mm-hmm. No, we're totally fucked. No. We there's so much stuff to watch. Mm. Um. <laughs> So apparently, uh, yeah, uh, according to this Variety report, the uh, there was a Creature Commandos presentation at the Annecy Animation Festival. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, the the bride of Frankenstein, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, she has four arms in the comics. She will only have two here in Creature Commandos and in the live action DCU. Pretty much because of the live action DCU, they're like, yeah, we can't mess with four arms. That's just going to be really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we watched it. Goro sucked. <laughs> I thought Goro was cool. Those are five hundred dollars sunglasses, asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll stand by that first Mortal Kombat movie. I still like it. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't that bad. I mean, it was nineteen ninety five, and when you consider who directed it, we didn't know then, but we know now. Looking back, we're like, damn, dude, that probably was the best one he made. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, someone asked Gunn, James, you previously mentioned that Peacemaker Season 2 will address the universe changing from the DCEU to the DCU. Does that mean that Creature Commandos will not address it and it will kind of be the unspoken elephant in the room? And Gunn says Creature Commandos does not need to address it because it didn't have a previous season with a couple of incongruencies. So there you go. <laughs> Gunn taking down names as he kicks their asses. Yep. Uh, you know, it's, it's so funny. People keep coming up with these questions. And I'm glad they're there. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't have much of a show. Also, <laughs> I don't, like, none of this shit bothers me. Like, I don't, like, I'm not sitting around going, like, well, why is it Creature Commandos talking about it? Because they don't know to. In universe. Like, it doesn't, they don't have to have. Well, like you said, though, it's, it's a good question to ask. I mean, they could, yeah. like, reach out and do it if they wanted I mean, they to could. in that universe. And he's you know, involved. That is, uh, that is a fun point is like, yeah, it's not a ridiculous question to ask, but it doesn't have to be there. Yeah. It doesn't like, it's not a ridiculous question to ask, but I would have never thought to ask it. And maybe that's because we've been doing this for nine years and I don't give a shit. (laughs) Maybe it's just like, look, I'm a DC fan. My house is full of DC. I think you are also squarely in the, it'll happen. What happens category right now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm like, eh, we'll see what they do. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not like sitting around going like, well, he better figure this out because I'm, I'm like, I don't give a shit. Like, I don't give a shit. Well, it's either it's going to hit like, or it's we've, not. We've been around for a while. Like, we're, we're going to see it when we see it. Yeah. Like, they can they can get it as close to the comic books as or the, the comic books that I am most familiar with. And now I've, I know so many comics because I'm like, oh, you're getting from, you're pulling from here, here, and here. And like, it just doesn't bother me that it's not like the 94 to 2001 era of comics or whatever, you know, bullshit thing. Um, post zero hour, pre new 52, whatever. Um, yeah. I guess new 52 was 2000, what, 10, 11? Um, <laughs> and legitimately, the four people offended by that messages. Sometimes. I mean, you can, is what I'm saying. You can. DC on screen at gmail.com. Yeah. That's probably the best place to look. I go to, I check the email way more than I do the social media accounts at this point. Like Twitter is a mess. Threads, I forget exists. I, yeah. Might as well just email us. Kind of honestly. I, I don't know what matters anymore. Nothing matters. That's the, that's the beauty and the fear. And the ethereal. <laughs> We're getting the penguin in September. Yeah. By the way, uh, <laughs> just gonna jump on into that because um, why not? Loved <sighs> that trailer. That trailer was so good. Yeah, solid. That was just, I you know, I it felt it weirdly felt more Scorsese than than the Joker shit that we've been getting. Even though that feels Scorsese in a different way. I don't know. I just I'm I'm digging this. I'm digging whatever this this era of uh incongruent Batman things <laughs> <laughs> where everything just looks like it's being shot through a dirty coffee pot. <laughs> uh, black or orange handles. Oh black. That is a black full, handle. Full calf. Right. A so dirty careful. black handled carif. Yeah. Man. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying it doesn't. It, it even I think it has more color than that, but I do like the grunge aspect of this. Oh yeah, definitely. Dude, okay, so here's Although the thing. I, oh, I I did mean to mention this to you the other day. 
I uh, I ran by the the UAB campus um, the other day for a for an appointment, and uh, I think grunge may be coming back in a way. Oh no, it is. Yeah, no, you go to Target. Look at what the people are buying. Nice the clothes. Oh yeah, like yeah. We I think we've talked about this before, but Have like we? I've. Okay, cool. Notice that the ladies are now wearing the the low rise pants that are kind of baggy, but they've got the thong coming up over the hips again. Oh, funny! And they're wearing the 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 big baggy uh, uh, flannel shirts, dude. It's, it's you know back when when we were teenagers. I, I dig it. It's beautiful. Beautiful. It's nice. It'll go away again, but for now, <laughs> hooray! Um. <laughs> you know what it also reminds me of though be like, a good 14 months yeah uh what it reminds me talking about it though you, did you ever see um <laughs> rescue from gilligan's island Mm-mm. there's uh so there there were several movies there were like four movies three or four movies after gilligan's island and they take place in the 70s you know oh, no and, no uh, no i think i did see this there's a bit where Gilligan goes to talk to uh, like they're Skipper. back in the they're back in the states, right? Yeah, yeah, they're in the states, and Skipper is very distressed and tells Gill- Gilligan, Gilligan, while we were away, the skirts went from down here all the way to up here, but then all the way back down again. We missed it. We missed it, Gilligan. <laughs> and it, it actually is kind of a fun movie. Just that one. The others sucked, but. uh the rescue from from Gilligan's Island because they have a great bit where they're talking to uh, Ginger and she's like, oh, that's good. "Well, well now like all the all the directors want you to all the scripts are full of four letter words and Gilligan of course doesn't understand this and he's like he's like what kind of four letter words Hey I saw Jaws Oh my God that's a four letter word I'm sorry I shouldn't have said that Oh come on <laughs> Anyway back to this penguin trailer mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was excited and maybe I just saw I saw the name and didn't know it. First of all, Theo Rossi's in this thing, guy that played Shades in the Netflix Marvel shows, and like Luke Cage and shit. Mm-hmm. He's fantastic. Yes. All right. I had forgotten Clancy Brown was in this thing. I had forgotten he that me Kristen. Up every time. He, every but time. He's you so good. Him. Clancy it, Brown? Yeah. Because he's so damn good? It's the enthusiasm. <laughs> from, from me? From you, in particular. I, I, I like him too. He's he can do no wrong, but the people's your, Lex your love for Clancy Brown. I do love Clancy Brown. It knows no bounds. <laughs> he was like the only reason that I watched as much of uh, that Sleepy Hollow TV show as I did. Oh, oh, yeah. Because like in the first season, two or three, he kept coming back as a ghost to white warm and shit. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I do like Clancy Brown a lot. Uh, I had forgotten Kristen Milioti is in this. Uh, she was the mother on How I Met Your Mother, but she was in a fantastic Star Trek parody of Black Mirror that was horrifying, and and she can do really good drama. She's Sophia Falcone, I, and she looks like she was gonna she's gonna kill it in this trailer. But the 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 big surprise for me that I was really excited about was Michael Zegan, who's playing Al Falcone. That guy was the uh, the freaking uh, the husband on the marvelous Ms. Maisel. Oh, Joel. Yes, Joel. Well, god damn, I didn't catch him. Yeah, he's in there just a couple of times, and I was like, oh, it's Maisel husband. Yeah, that's not gonna hurt him. Fucking thing. No, he's fantastic. He's great. Fantastic actor. A uh, bunch of other people like this. Michael Kelly. He's always a creep. Um, playing <laughs> yeah. Johnny Vitti. Like, yeah. there are some really good actors in here, but those are the ones I kind of zeroed in on and just went, oh, they're there? Oh, yeah, okay. And look, forgive me if we've talked about this on the show before. I just don't remember anything. <laughs> um, so, we I'm got like that new I'm preparing footage. myself from the embarrassment of not remembering it either. Go ahead. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. <clears throat> Feet planted. Just don't. Just Got don't it. tell us. Yeah. Um, don't tell us we screwed up. Mm-hmm. But, so they they also confirmed, Max confirmed, that Carmen Ejogo, I don't know who this person is, has been cast in the role of Eve Carlo with a K. Uh, this character is not in the comics. 
but her last name is interesting. And I can't help but wonder if she is at all related to the original Clayface, Basil Carlo. Mm-hmm. And what they could or would be willing to do there. That would be fun. You know, in this format, if they ever did the the shadow version of that scene that we all remember, mm-hmm. it would be haunting. I mean, it, it is haunting. Yeah. We all know the I mean, scene. I mean, I don't think they're going to do the Matt. We Hagen all version. know the one scene. I don't think that. Yeah, I don't think the. I don't think the Matt Reeves universe is going to do the a, a Basil Carlo version of the Matt Hagen Batman the animated series thing where they're like pouring chemicals down a dude's throat in silhouette. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be more like the "I am a failed actor" kind of bullshit. <laughs> probably what. Probably, I mean, especially since Matt Reeves is is producing that Batman Cape Crusader animated show. It'll probably, and they're doing the, the Basil Carlo clay face. It'll probably be a, closer to that, I would imagine. Oh, that makes sense. All right, what you, what you, what you say, man? You want to you wanna hit up Superman? Talk about some Superman? Sounds good. Uh, quick commercial break. Cool. Commercial break. We'll be right back, damn it. All right, and we're back. And, uh... You know what? Before we we talk about Superman, thank you to the patrons. Always, always a always a nice thing to remember to do. Uh, you guys are awesome. And uh, Cindy Brewer, I saw you had our backs, telling us there was a new Penguin trailer. Thank you. Sorry, I got wildly distracted. <laughs> uh, yep. And didn't respond. But patreoncom slash DC on screen. And uh, if you're listening now, there is a new Patreon episode up. And we had a fun little conversation about Bill and Ted, mm-hmm. but no spoilers on the last movie if you haven't seen it. Yep, because <laughs> Jason hasn't seen it. I sprung it on him. I was like, let's talk about Bill and Ted because uh, I recently watched all of them and wanted to wanted to get into it a little bit. But yeah, super it on me, much like the nation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when the movie Superman, was released, did you did you see this the Superman slate? I put a picture of it in the show notes. In our show notes, I, I don't think it'll be on the show notes. <laughs> Not these in particular. Um, but yeah, it's like a, just a slate. So, you know, I just really like the design of it. And uh, it's got kind of a, I don't know, almost a um, Spider-Man and Spider-Verse kind of design to it. Or feel to it, anyway. Like, But it's Superman. I don't know. But it's also kind of a Guardians of the Galaxy feel. And I don't think that's a bad thing. So, yeah, maybe. The slate looks cool. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you know who Beck, do you know who Beck Bennett is on Saturday Night Live? I, I've seen him, and I don't know who the hell he is. But, uh, yeah, he uh, gun confirmed. He's playing uh, Steve Lombard of the Daily Planet. He's a staff member, um, a staff member of the Daily Planet. And uh, I don't, I don't know him from Adam. I've seen his face, but I've never seen him actually do anything. I've seen him like at the end looking, you know, like he's just standing there. Yeah. You know, with everyone's like, good night, everybody. (laughs) The band is playing or whatever. I don't think I've ever seen him in a skit. Yeah. (laughs) It's not his fault. I don't think I've seen anything out of that for like 10 years. Oh, I mean, I, I watch clips of. SNL pretty regularly and uh, I do try to watch the weekend update pretty often nice. because I like Colin Yost and uh, Michael Chi. J. Oh yeah. No, what I said was wrong. I've seen a lot of those clips and yeah. uh, those are very funny. Those guys are great. Yeah, they are good. Um, <laughs> also gun confirmed that Christopher McDonald, but not shooter McGavin. From the from this Adam Sandler movies, it's not that Christopher McDonald, uh, Christopher McDonald, sorry, Michaela Hoover and Christopher McDonald are going to be in the Superman movie. Um, Michaela Hoover was in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three and the Suicide Squad, and she's going to be playing Cat Grant from the from the Daily Planet, and um, Christopher McDonald is going to be playing Daily Planet reporter Ron Troop, and I don't. I don't know what Christopher McDonald has done. Mm-hmm. Not that Christopher McDonald. Yeah. Yeah. Not outright. 
But it's, you know, it's nice to say, oh, I know those those names in Superman lore. I mean, all the names, sure. Yeah. Now, we don't normally talk about Superman or any kind of leaks too much, but they're like set leaks that are basically, they had pictures of Superman in costume on a newspaper that were inside, They were those newspapers were inside of what, like the metal newspaper dispensers. And they're super, super blurry, but it does look like, it does look like he's got trunks. And when I say it looks like he has trunks. Hold on, hold on. I I want to go back to trunks, but also metal newspaper dispensers. Yeah. What the hell do we call those? I don't know. Do you know? I don't either. But that does not feel right (laughs) in a way that offends me in a way. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I see them. I've seen them out, you know, in real life, you know. What the fuck are those? They Uh, were always rusted. They were always yes, rusted. Yes, of course. Um, of course. And chipping, I, chipping the blue paint. I mean, whenever I saw them, I ignored them to go to the uh, apartment finder next to it. But <laughs> oh, that was worse. That the, oh yeah, God, you used to be able to put yeah. change in that. Mm-hmm. Fuck me. Okay. And and who among us doesn't remember Lloyd Christmas losing his wallet trying to get uh, a copy of uh, Rhode Island Slut? Out of it. I mean, uh, as we've all done. Yeah. And he tells the old lady, don't you go dying on me. Um, <laughs> God, I just feel like there's another time for that. Like, I don't know what it's called. It's not like news dispenser. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, well, the the name on the uh, the brand on the outside of this one says uh, Show Rack. Ah, oh, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, Show Rack. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. Uh, so look, mm-hmm. you, there's not a lot you can tell, but I'll say this from what I've seen. And I did like blow them up and I took them and took the ones other people blew up and I stuck them into Photoshop and I played with them a little bit. Saw if I could get some of the colors out, find out what, which part of his crotch is red. Is it other parts as well? <laughs> and when I say trunks, mm-hmm. it looks like, it looks like. These are proper trunks. It looks like these are like golden age trunks to me. I might be wrong. I might be seeing it weird. You know, there might be something red that's glaring off of it to show it and making it look like there's more of his leg that's red. But it so far to me, it does not look like he's wearing like red, uh, red briefs. You know, it doesn't look he's wearing tidy reddies. (laughs) <laughs> it looks like on he's, top of the tidy bluey yeah it looks like they're like boxer briefs almost yeah hey uh dave here popping in from monday june 24th my friends i was totally wrong these are straight up classic briefs like red trunks and how do i know as you may have heard all the little chicks with the crimson lips go cleveland rocks cleveland rocks because they are shooting metropolis Street level scenes in Cleveland, Ohio, and a ton of pics are hitting the internet. So yes, Superman has red trunks. They do have a line that goes from the lower abdomen into the trunks and then continues along the leg. So it does look like it is part of a piece. I can't tell. It looks like there might be some yellow piping along the edge of the bottom of the trunks, but... They're trunks, y'all. Uh, there's a big, bulky yellow belt with big red belt loops. There's a yellow Kingdom Come Superman symbol on the back of his red cape. There are shots where the suit is more wrinkled than perhaps you would like. There are other shots where it looks like a perfect fit. My guess is there will be some digital de-wrinkling. These things are very common. You can see back to back like side by side comparisons for marvel stuff and dc stuff they 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 digitally get rid of wrinkles if you don't like trunks you probably won't like this though i have no hate in me for it i'm looking forward to it in the set pictures we see in there with mr terrific who looks absolutely perfect like a perfect rendition of the of the costume uh there are shots with brosnahan's lois With Superman and Lois, and the chemistry is so there. It is just, like, they're, like, cracking each other up on the set. They're, like, the... Dude, 
is honestly heartwarming. I don't even know how to describe it. I am seeing those two as Clark and Lois. Sorry, not sorry, and I'm not even sorry about not being sorry for real. Anyway, <laughs> there's bound to be more. Keep your eyes peeled if you're into it. Back to the show. I kind of want him to be wearing the reds over the blue, just because the blue, if you just did that, is too revealing. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, the red is there to be saggy on purpose. Yeah, I like that. I feel like Superman would be too modest. Yeah. No, he's just trying like, to, like a, a, like a last minute thought almost. Just like, Why are you wearing your underwear on the outside? I don't want my super cock being shown to the world. There are children who look up to me. Damn it. I kind of like the idea the, the, the also, like, he just, <laughs> like, after the fact, they're like, well, I mean, I was just trying to fly out and beat this uh, super villain from, you know, Saturn. But yeah. just at the last second, I grabbed a, a pair of something. The thing I had about that is they wouldn't survive. <laughs> Damn you, physics. I want there to be like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know, like a super group that's like, they're aliens from Saturn, right? And there's nine of them. And they're all like sort of sad and existentialist, you know, kind of gloomy. Yeah, so and far. And they call themselves the Saturn Nine. So far, you're pitching the best band from 1974. And I'm on board. What you what 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 you got? Well, there 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 are nine members of this super group, and they're they call themselves the Saturn Nine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's the joke. It's, like, it's all for a pun. Yeah. Yeah. What part of this isn't gonna <laughs> make an album? I, I'm just <laughs> I'm just waiting on you to tell me. When, <laughs> well, they're not musicians. Where to find for this one shit. Thing. That's all. <laughs> they're they're very bad superheroes or villains. They are. And you know goddamn well, somebody at like Yell in a freshman fucking dorm room had that same fucking idea and just didn't get around to it. Probably. Like 1971. All right. Peacemaker. Uh, so what's funny is uh, John Cena was at Comic Palooza. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> some kid asked him if he was going to be in any other... Uh, non-peacemaker DCU projects that he can talk about. And his response was, do you know who James Gunn is? He's got this look when you make him mad. And it's actually indescribable, but I don't want to see that ever again. So I'm going to say, no comment. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Mm. Uh. Yeah. That's the best part of my day. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, yeah, the uh, looks like uh, Sol Rodriguez and uh, David Denman have joined the cast of Peacemaker season two. Uh, Denman has been on The Office, Mayor of East Town, Power Rangers. We don't know who he's been cast as. Uh, Rodriguez has been on Star Trek: Picard and Grashi and Party of Five. And uh, she's playing Sasha Bordeaux. In the comics, that character was a member of Checkmate. It was a big supporting character of Batman. Bodyguard of Bruce Wayne. Goes on to become an agent and then the Black Queen of Checkmate. Um, and and a love interest for Mr. Terrific, who is in Superman Legacy. Or Superman now, it's called. I can't get that in my mind, that it's not Superman Legacy still. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, might be some connective tissue there in Peacemaker. That will be kind of fun. I mean, it, we we don't know where that's going to reboot specifically, but, yeah, that would be kind of funny if it's um, <laughs> if that's the mechanism. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I'm, I'm excited about this. Gunn confirmed uh, an addition to Peacemaker Season 2. Tim Meadows. That old fucker. Yeah. In the role of Agent Langston Fleury. Like... He is the reason to watch the Goldbergs. <laughs> he is good there. He's so funny. I, I I mean, I love him and everything I've seen him in. Even even Michael Richards' show. The Michael Richards show. You know, where they're all just like, Michael Richards is running a detective agency. I think it ran six episodes before they canceled it. Nice. But he was, you know, everyone was like, ah, oh, you're a pervert because he likes to watch people, you know? <laughs> and nice. uh, he's like, uh, we prefer a voyeur. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if you know Tim Meadows, you know exactly how he said it. I do. 
Yeah, I love that guy. Uh, yeah. And I'm I'm happy to see him show up on Peacemaker uh, in, in the DCU. Like, yes, please, all all of the Tim Meadows. Yeah. Never seen him do anything that wasn't funny either. Mm. Uh Greg Matala is coming in to uh direct episodes two and three of Peacemaker season two. This is the guy that did uh Super Bad. Mm. Uh, Gunn says, ever since seeing Day Trippers back in the 90s at Film Forum in New York, I've been a huge uh, Greg Matala fan uh, through Superbad and so much more. When we needed a director for episodes two and three of season two, he was the first person I thought of. Can't wait for you guys to see what we're cooking. Man, me either. He also confirmed that uh, Freddie Strauma's Vigilante is coming back. Nice. I'm excited about that. Uh, Lanterns News. He says, uh, yes, it's true. The Lanterns DCU series is putting together a crack team of writers based on a wonderful pilot script and Bible by Chris Mundy, Tom King, and Damon Lindelof. I mean, a hearty welcome to Chris and Damon Lindelof as they join the DC Studios family. No welcome necessary for old Tom King, who has been here nearly since inception. Uh, by the way, Chris Mundy is from Ozark. You know Lindelof. Yeah. Lost. Star Trek movies. And most importantly, Watchmen, the TV show. Yep. Now, I'm a little concerned. With the fact that you haven't watched Watchmen. Well, yes, I am concerned about that, actually. <sighs> I found I found a, another copy of Watchmen, and I had to buy it. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. It's my fourth copy of Watchmen, if we're not counting <laughs> movie. <laughs> like, I've got the motion comic. I've got like the, the I've got like the trade the like the, the trade paperback and then I've got like a hardcover mm-hmm. and I've got like a motion comic so this is my fourth version where it's like hardcover and it's like each individual issue it's they split it back up into the twelve issues and they're each they're glorious and they're gorgeous and they're in a box set but each issue is is a hardcover and oh that's nice yeah it's 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 a gorgeous gorgeous set. And uh, I felt dumb for buying another copy of Watchmen. Um, but, like, but it it's happened. pretty, and it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is, and it's too big to fit on any of my shelves, so I'm just, I'm just it's like on the top of a bookshelf <laughs> with Dr. Manhattan facing and looking down at us. But um, He actually un- yeah. uninstalled a toilet just to have somewhere for it to be. No, no, that's that's not what happened. But ran out of room. This man, there is no yes and here, Jason. <laughs> There's nothing for ran you. Ran out here. of room. That's no, a secret story. No, uh, what I'm actually worried about is like there are some people from Lost who, some writers who have said that Linda Loft was a bit of a dick and would you know kind of get off on making him cry and shit. Mm. Female writers specifically, but always weird. Yeah, I I hope that's not exactly true, but you know. It probably is. <laughs> it's one of those many things where, like, yeah, if somebody mentioned it, we should probably look into it. And yeah, and there's probably something I, you know, going on. But at the same time, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you just hope that it's one of those situations where someone just misunderstood or something. Probably not. But <laughs> yeah, it's probably that. Probably. Not. At this point, I'm pretty jaded mm-hmm. because everything i like the the people behind it are fucking monsters and I, I i can either just not enjoy anything ever again because i can assume safely that if i enjoy it then someone will people eventually who are running it are fucking awful but you know yeah why not we're just like you know what that's their shit i can't handle that i can't deal with that i don't know i can't worry about that i'm sorry cancel I mean, I my shit. version is like, you enjoy what you do <laughs> in the moment, and then if some other dark, glooming cloud eventually obscures the entire thing, then I can't enjoy it anymore. Yeah. Partly well, cloudy think- has some some merit. Like, I, I can enjoy some things, even though it's been slightly occluded. Yeah. But... Hmm. Dude, like, like, recently... Like, Jerry Seinfeld's been, like, talking about, like, being angry because, like, oh, people are canceling everything and you can't be funny anymore. I'm like, dude, shut up. That motherfucker's been talking about that since, oh, God, it's been, like, 15 years now. I mean, he's he's lightly hinted at his position. And lightly enough that, like, I could agree with him on some level. Mainly where it's like, yes, there are extremists on the left who are doing exactly what the extremists on the right were trying to do with censorship. And there's a point where you don't 
go that way. But now it's just like, ah, Jesus, dude, you're just fucking old and annoying right now. Just <laughs> shut up. Shut up. You f- just stop yeah. fucking talking about all of this. Just stop. Don't ruin my favorite sitcom. <laughs> Don't become Rob Snyder, for Christ's sake. Please spare me this. Please. And, but, you know what? When when God closes a door. He gives you Conan, <laughs> who's still hanging in he there. He opens a window. Well, no, but, yeah, well, sure, but, but he, he opens a window. Because, look, and I, I feel great about this, because... Jerry said all... Jerry came out... Jerry Seinfeld came out and said all this stuff about, like, you know... I don't think a sitcom... Like Seinfeld could be on today with the with the cancel culture, and fucking Rob McElhaney, who loves Seinfeld and does it's always sunny in Philadelphia, was like, I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> like he pushed back on Seinfeld because he's that guy and he can. Like the amount of understatement for you saying he loves that show and it's based on it. Oh my god! Yeah, like, like that is it was that is a person who has bought. I don't know. Have, like, when's the last time you read you heard about that guy? Other than just like the shows, yeah, he just keeps buying shit. <laughs> he an yeah. entire career built around the idea of just extending the Seinfeld premise. Yeah. So look, look, you know, I already liked Rob quite a bit. All right. Um, and while I may have, you know, lost a fair amount of respect for Jerry Seinfeld that day, I gained so much more for Rob and I was like, I'll be damned. I just want to go rewatch Mythic Quest now. Oh, you really enjoy it. I mean, I've seen Mythic Quest. That's why I said rewatch. Oh shit. Yeah. No, you, oh, I forgot you talked about. It. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Talked that about is, that a um, lot. Mythic Quest is well-worn territory in this house. Yeah. We have adored it. We look forward to the spinoff. Mm-hmm. I do need to catch up on It's Always Sunny. Mm-hmm. And damn it. He, he may have bought me that time now. Fair enough. We should probably talk about more DC stuff. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> uh, Batman Part 2. Uh, you know what the big news is for Batman Part 2? What? The Batman Part 2. James Gunn once again confirms Matt Reeves' The Batman Trilogy is not being canceled. Hmm. That's the news. Got it. I was like, every like two weeks, somebody comes up with, well, I mean... <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's just being canceled because James Gunn doesn't want anybody to do anything that's not DCU. <laughs> no, no, you sweet little Snyder cult. Mm. You just keep coming up with the reasons. Reasons for no one to ever like you again. <laughs> uh, I'm so tired. Here was something interesting. Uh, this guy says, James Gunn, please wink if you have plans for Deathstroke. I am waiting for my boy to shine for so long. <laughs> I don't know why that cracked me up. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm with you, though. <laughs> and Gunn responds with a winking emoji. Well, it sounds like there's a plan. There's something in the works. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, since, since we're, we're not too far away from having talked briefly about it's always sunny in philadelphia um there is a version of a movie god what was it now if you watch it on max there's a character that danny devito plays in the movie space jam is space jam if you watch space jam on max Mm -hmm. you can turn on a setting where teen titans go will do the commentary on holy shit that sounds fantastic and they like Pause the movie to point out that the guy Danny DeVito played. He's like, hey, that, that's Danny DeVito. He played the penguin. <laughs> and they like crack jokes about the movie and shit. And, and behind the scenes stuff on DC stuff. Oh, hell yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going to go ahead and pull up. Ben Random Space Jam. It is MST3K, but with Teen Titans Go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so and that's what me you know and how daughter are doing soon. Gotcha. Oh yeah, uh, you heard it here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, on the topic of people just making up shit because they're bored mm-hmm. and trying to start some shit. Right. 
Um, this guy wrote to James Gunn and says, I know you said that before, that Bruce will be a couple of years older than Clark, but do you mean two years older, or do you mean a few years older? And uh, James Gunn said, I'm pretty sure I didn't say that. What I said was Bruce, quote, could be a couple years older than Clark. All I meant was I, I wasn't tied to Bruce and Clark being the exact same age. Fair enough. And I, I just think it's ridiculous because there was also another big thing that happened where when those, we got sidetracked on the newspaper holders, but when <laughs> when those dispensers came out, you could see that like, people were like on Reddit going like, look at the fucking price on the Daily Planet. It says 625. That That wasn't the price of newspapers in the 90s. Somewhere along the way, and I don't know where, a bunch of people got super, like, super uh, convinced without any real reason to that Superman was going to happen in the 90s. I think that's <laughs> just when they were born. Like, it was set in the 90s. Like It's going to be like an old tale, like an origin tale in the 90s. And Gunn keeps going like, no, it's fucking not. And it's also not an origin movie. And it's just Superman. It's... I- I mean, he has to be born at some point. I mean, he does. But there's a lot of but projection not in there this movie on the 90s part. Yeah. I just think, you know, I think people are like, maybe there were rumors. And look, I don't pay attention to the rumors. If only, I only really pay attention when James Gunn comes out and says, that's bullshit. And then I forget because I want to enjoy stuff <laughs> and life. Yeah. To some degree. Um, Ideally, it would be fun <laughs> to enjoy things. Yeah. So maybe, like, I'm sure that there was a good month where, like, I was just like, oh, God, stop spreading that rumor. He's already said no. And then my brain just pushed it out, like Kelly Bundy. Mm, gotcha. Like, if I learn too much new information, it pushes old information mm-hmm, out of my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, Sort of like how I forget that I have milk in the fridge. Right. Like, weekly. Yeah. Have you have you seen the TikTok of, like, the guy doing, like, the uh, the changing of the spinach? Where he just like walks in, opens the fridge, takes out the old spinach, unopened, salutes it, throws it in the garbage, puts in the new spinach. <laughs> that is very much my life. <laughs> I. When are we done also recording? Also, DC news. Because I need to take out the spinach. <laughs> All you, right. you have reminded me how how bad I am at that. Uh huh. It was the salute that got me. There. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that hit home. I can picture like it's in the top right of the fridge right now. And yeah. I'm sure like it, it's expiration date was early July or early June. I mean, yeah. And I always feel so much guilt because I'm like, oh, it's so good for like blood sugar and it like helps circulation and blood pressure. Oh my God. What? I need to eat spinach. Oh, well. Oh, look, a nutty buddy. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> those are in the closet like, behind me like i need some greek yogurt and some uh spinach that's um yeah that's what i need as i'm opening the nutty buddy bar and cracking open a diet coke yep how are you in this house right now without actually being in this house right now <laughs> no i have nutty buddies in the in the closet do you really it's, yeah right there i'm staring i'm at all them. out like I just, I just like, and there's expired spinach in the refrigerator. I'm not joking. Yeah. All of that yeah. is true, Jason. Mm-hmm. Okay, look. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, my wife went and uh, fed a friend's cat, and they gave her like a gift basket, and included in that gift basket of was a box of nutty buddies and nutty buddies. No, 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 no. They gave her a box of nutty buddies included in mm-hmm. that. Uh, she brought it home. She. Uh, ate one and then she put she asked me to put another one in the fridge for her for later the one in the fridge stayed there for like a week (laughs) and i consumed every one of the others in the box felt bad about it went to walmart got a double size box of nutty buddies so your mention of them was shame yeah (laughs) brought it was just brought talking Gotcha. Brought the double, brought the double pack mm-hmm. of Nutty Buddy bars back home. Had one immediately. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, they didn't make it home intact. Um, um, at some point, 
I, she was, it was like three or four days and she had to go out of town. So the day before she went out of town, she was like, uh, she moved the nutty bodies and she goes, that box feels light. <laughs> <laughs> and the no, shame no, was overwhelming. No, no, <laughs> Stop before. Was that Bethany? <laughs> Who the fuck approached you like a fucking mob boss and said like, yeah, your package is like this malt. Like, (laughs) she was like, it's a little light, buddy. And I was like, how much was in there? She's like, I don't know. It didn't feel like much. And I opened it and there were, there were like four left of like 12, you know, it was like 12 packs of like 12, two packs. 11, apparently. And... So like I felt really bad, and uh, and she was like, "Yeah, dude, like I, I I still have that one in the fridge." And I was like, "Why won't you eat it and move on to the others?" I was like, "I mean, we can just buy another box of of these damn nutty buddy bars." And she's like, "Well, it's not gonna." I was like, "I won't eat any of those." And she was like, "Well, I'm about to go out of town, so it's not gonna matter." And I just immediately got another one. <laughs> Here's the thing about me. I go on. I get on kicks. It might be a month. I, it might be why two days. Suddenly, fucking crack, dude. They're so good. I have not thought about this brand in 25 fucking years. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm serious. I have not thought about the idea yeah. of this snack in 25 years. I and do suddenly periodically. It's every week for me, and I mean that about yeah. like three months ago. Yeah. I, I do periodically every about once a year I go on a nutty buddy kick. We're like and it's never it's like me going thing. well, it's never me going, I am going to buy a nutty buddy. That'll be good. What it is is like, you know, nothing, 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 nothing for months at a time, and then somebody introduces it. It's, you know, my wife's friend who gives her a box because as a thank you for feeding cats while they're at the beach. <laughs> And then it's be- it becomes like a <laughs> haunting a presence story. for three months. <laughs> what? That's such a weird. It's my wife's friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's always something weird like that. Whereas, or like you know, I go <laughs> down to Montgomery to see my family, and my it grandmother's like just you're like, like, "Yeah, this cat in Arizona ran across peanut butter." <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's, you know, it's always something weird. Like wife's friend gives her nutty buddy bars. Yeah. I go down to Montgomery. My grandmother says, do you want these? Someone gave them to me and I just can't sit here and eat damn nutty buddy bars all day. I'm like, I can <laughs> raise his hand. <laughs> so it's always like some kind of weird thing because if someone generally says, Hey, can I get you candy? Like if it's Easter or something and my parents say, do you want do you want me to get you some candy or pick up some candy for you? Or my wife calls me and says, Hey, it's the day after Easter. Do you want me to get discount candy? Number one thing on my mind is Reese's. Get those Reese's. Get those Reese's trees. Get those eggs. Get the whatever they are. Reese's. They're half the fucking they're half the fucking section these days. Yeah. It I mean, unless it's weird something weird like uh, the the giant Reese's with the potato chips in them, which can honestly just go fuck yeah, themselves no, no, entirely. No, no. That's um, that is taking no. advantage of a part of our childhood that, like, fuck you, even you Reese's, fuck you. Well, I just I think it's gross, but uh, I'm like, look, uh, you know, part part of the Reese's experience is the texture, and I'm not gonna bite into a damn Reese's and get a bunch of damn crunchy ass ruffles. No, it does matter. I won't have it. I want I want the melty grit of a Reese's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know who Anthony Starr is, right? Oh, deeply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just watched him um, kill a bunch of people. I need to I need to watch the 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 boys. I know it's come out, but I haven't done it yet. It just so happens that every time I sit down to watch it, or every time I sit down with my wife to watch anything, I'm also eating, and I'm like, I'm not gonna eat and watch the boys. You should not. Yeah, no. I know better. Yeah. So we watch Married with Children, and I go, well, we'll get to the boys eventually. But now I'd rather it's kind watch of, that guy grow up his crotch than watch the boys and try to eat, for sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, watching Al put, like, 
a fourth of his fingers down into his pants <laughs> and look sad is better than watching like a little man run into a dick hole and explode. <laughs> I mean, even that, even that feels like you ain't even got it into this season. You ain't even got it into this concept. Yeah. I know. I haven't watched it yet. So, uh, did you watch Gen V by the way? Yep. Wait, was that yep, yes? I did. Okay. What do you, how do you, what do you think they're going to do? How do you think they're going to carry on with that guy getting killed? Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, really? No, I mean, I don't know about him getting killed. I just mean that, uh, I don't know. They could do that a lot of ways. Like, there's, uh, it, well, I hadn't thought about it. But one of the fun parts about this universe is uh, it doesn't matter who dies. Mm hmm. Plenty of room. I mean, but. Yes and no, but he was such an integral. Oh, he definitely was. And. Character. It, yeah, it. They could have done so much more with what he was doing. Yeah. But by the way, uh, if if you any of you listeners don't know who we're talking about, Chance Perdomo uh, yeah. uh, tragically died. I believe it was a motorcycle accident. Um, played Andre on the care uh, on on Gen V, the spinoff, and uh, he was fantastic. And I don't know what they're going to do without him. Honestly. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't, I don't, there, there weren't that many people left at the end of the last season, were there? <laughs> Every version of uh, the boys is just basically like, who's left after Homelander kills everyone? Yeah. Oh, well, uh, so here's the thing. He was talking to Cinema Blend. This does tie into DC, I swear to God. He was talking to Cinema Blend, and they asked if he believed in the idea of superhero fatigue. And he says, no, not at all. Actually, I question where the fatigue lies, and I think without digging into the specifics of anything that has or hasn't been successful, I'm very curious to see what happens around any notion of superhero fatigue when James Gunn's superhero projects come out. I don't think the audience is fatigued. Let me put it that way. I think the audience is hungry. We were just down in Mexico doing a a CCXP down there, and they are hungry as hell for superhero content. And someone on threads asked James Gunn, James, did you happen to see what Anthony Starr said or Anthony Starr said regarding superhero fatigue? Uh, Gunn says, I did. And as usual, and unsurprisingly, I'm on board with Anthony. People want to see new and surprising stories that don't seem like a retread of what they've already seen, whether it's superheroes or giant monsters or cowboys. I continue. This is me, Dave, talking. I continue to be hyped for this kind of statement from James Gunn. I am so tired, especially with this last run of DC movies, and honestly with this last run of Marvel movies, I'm tired of the same old, same old. They're just churning out formula at this point. I want to see somebody do something cool and interesting. The last superhero thing I really super enjoyed was Peacemaker Season 1. Like, super, super enjoyed. Where I was like literally just chomping at the bit, just waiting, just waiting for it to come out. And you know, that doesn't, that's, you know, not counting the boys and Gen V, but yeah, different universe entirely. It's different. It's a different thing. And it's a very specific also, kind of uh, thing. Peacemaker had that uh, fucking opening, but, but yeah, even, even compared to the boys, like I loved Peacemaker season one. It was just different than anything else. It was a different kind of story. It had you and excited. Just, you wanted to know. It did. I, I wanted to see where it was going. Uh, it was. I was looking forward to every episode. That was something I'd never had with Black Adam. Shazam 2, even though I enjoyed both of those on some level, they weren't great to me. They were just kind of, meh. They were mid, as the, the kids say these days. And, uh, I mean, I know you liked all, the, all that stuff more than I did. But, uh... Yeah, enjoyed and liked are weird terms. But, like... Yeah, there's uh, a sameness to all of those things. Sure, I mean, I I enjoyed those, um, and I think everyone would have enjoyed those a lot more, frankly, as part of universe that that made more sense uh, cohesively. If it had made more, yes, I agree with you there. But also, if it wasn't like this, like fatalistic notion that eh, none of this matters. <laughs> but we didn't the, have like, that when Black that Adam came out. Came uh, came to be at some period where it feels like. They were being slapped at the wall to see if they stuck. Matters, like. Well, I mean, it, even less than that. It was. It was more of like, eh. Well, we kind of made these before we knew, but uh, look, we're making a new batch of cookies. But you want these old ones? Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're still pretty okay. I mean, 
We've been under the the hot lamp all day, but that is true. We weren't sure if they were actually going to stick based on the the temperature of the water. Well, why is this cookie only only like three quarters there? Well, we had to cut off some mold. Yeah, it was a weird time. If people saw mold, they wouldn't want the next batch. <laughs> Why'd you throw that, that batch of chocolate chip cookies away? Because eh, we were going to discontinue them. <laughs> we didn't want people to think they could get something that they weren't going to get anymore. So yeah. Hopefully we just decided, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tease them with something they can't have. <laughs> it's easier. Anyway. It's easier to do this way. Yeah. I feel yeah. like there's like I, one look. accountant that can be held responsible instead. Oh, just shut it down. We'll just do it this way. Throw it out the window. Mm-hmm. But look, uh, I'm pro- I've probably said this on the show before, but I want to continue to say it in case we have any new listeners coming in. You will see people uh, who are usually probably a Zack Snyder aficionado uh, claiming guns. One movie didn't in the DCEU flopped. It came out during covid it came out same day in theaters as it did at home on HBO Max. Uh, it did flop in the theaters, sort of. But it also like was huge numbers on HBO Max. It did really, really well on HBO Max. Um, it was not a flop overall, importantly. There were lots of... I mean, it was in the middle of COVID. These things matter. Yeah. And uh, no matter how much revisionist history we try to slap onto it, because we have preferences of directors... It was a success. If that and Peacemaker season one hadn't been a huge freaking success, they would have given them the universe. Yeah, true. They just wouldn't have. Superman and Lois. Elizabeth Tullock says of season four's premiere episode that it's bold. It's bananas. It's emotional. What they did was based on one of the comics. It was a very bold decision on their part to do this and to pull it off for the first episode of season four. The CW's president of entertainment, Brad Schwartz, said, I have watched nine of the ten episodes, and they are fucking awesome. (laughs) It is weekly event television. Greg Berlanti and the producers have constructed ten bangers. They really go for it. I have cried twice watching the first nine episodes, and I haven't even gotten to the finale yet. It is Emmy-worthy. And by the way, you can watch this final season without having watched the previous seasons and still be emotionally invested in what is happening. It is a wonderful ten-episode contained arc. Here's the thing. I would think that he was full of bullshit because he's CW's president of entertainment. Except that I have watched every other episode, all the previous episodes of Superman and Lois. And that coincides exactly with what that show has done. I don't think there's been a bad episode in the batch. I I almost could like sit here and think of a better advertisement. They should have paid you for that. Me? Yeah. (laughs) Look, I am notoriously hard I believe many of our listeners use the word harsh. <laughs> it has come up. On the CW. In our three-star reviews, even. Yeah. Uh, on, on the CW Q of DC shows. I have been very, very hard on it because I want it to be really good. I want it to be awesome. I don't want to sit there and listen to, as you know, uh, dialogue. Superman and Lois is, so far, three seasons of nothing but bangers. Yeah. Even when they replace one of the main actors... They had to recast. And I'm sitting there going, I'll buy it. Mm -hmm. He's fine. This is wonderful. (sighs) Somehow they managed to pull off a whole season where the big bad is Allison Mack. (laughs) Yeah. I'm serious. I know. That was a season. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she, it wasn't a sex cult. It was more of a, let's go to another universe cult and join with ourselves in an alternate reality. But she was Allison Mack. (laughs) They named her Allie, for Christ's sake. <laughs> it was fucking hell. But it was what it dude. was. <laughs> like, they did an episode set in Smallville, making fun, or basically commentating, not even making fun, making common, uh, commentary on a, pre, on a star of Smallville. Mm-hmm. And that shit was serious and was gripping, and it had me invested. Yeah, it was good. I, it was like good with a you and an umlaut. <laughs> That shit. <laughs> I don't know if that works out for real. Uh, so <laughs> Superman, the four Superman and Lois. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Superman and Lois debuts his fourth and final season on Thursday, October 17th. It says here, and it's going to 
have a two hour premiere that airs uh, between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. Eastern time. And then be- the the next week, Superman and Lois will air Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Ten episodes. If you haven't watched Superman and Lois, I know you haven't. Mm, no. You need to catch up. Um, ten episodes into the first it, season, I think. Oh, it's so good. It's so, so good. Plus, you know. I recently reviewed my uh, TV time status, and mm-hmm. I think that's where I was. Okay. You know what? Like, I'm trying to, like... I need to finish. I still need to fin- finish the last season of The Flash, and uh, and I, I desperately need to get into my adventures with Superman. Mm-hmm. I want a clean slate for for when James really starts cranking out his stuff. I want to be free. I want to be free of CW. I would happily watch yeah. a fifth season of Superman and Lois, That's a good but point. I don't. I don't even consider that CW anymore. It's just too good. Yeah, that that is a good point. You've yeah you've ele- it elevated it in a way that it makes sense to me, but. Oh, I kind of get they it. They did three full seasons of nothing but the kind of good that were in a handful of seasons that made us like Arrow season one. <laughs> yeah. It's just, when does this get bad? Yeah. There's, I, I remember like one or two dodgy effects where, and it wasn't even that bad. Like my wife like paused it to go, oh, that looked bad. And I went, no, no, <laughs> we don't say that about the show. They've earned, they've earned some leeway. <laughs> it's like how Doctor like they, Who fans talk, though. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, look, I, I look. know. Season ten, it looked bad for a second, but it's it's good. Uh huh. It's good. Just keep watching. I'm like, look, this isn't Wonder Woman 1984. <laughs> yeah. All right, this isn't like Noodle Legs running up a thing in the Amazon. No, this is the Superman Lois. This is top notch. Yeah. And if for just a second they have like a weird car thing. Well, we're just going to give it to him and move on. Yeah, I get it. It really is actually better than that channel. What's weird, though, is mm-hmm. like, me and you are about to hit a weird point where people don't understand what that channel was. Yeah. We're actually about to become like historical in a way. Are yeah. we? I mean, I'm pretty used to that. <laughs> I mean, uh, like, we'll be able to document, like, if you look at our episodes, that that was a real thing. Mm-hmm. But it won't matter anymore. Yeah. That's what I mean by that. Yeah. Oh, I mean. I well, mean, we don't matter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's what I was getting at. <clears throat> but was it clear enough? Hey, you know, I had, well, first of all, I've always liked old mm-hmm. shit, you know? So I've always been uh, irrelevant. Because I'll just be like, ah, I remember that uh, Andy Griffith thing. Oh, yeah. My favorite show growing up was Nick at Night. Yeah. People my age would go, fuck you talking yeah. about. I don't know what that is. You know, you know what the Andy Griffith show. You know, my grandmother watches it. I'm like, you shut your mouth. That is some of the best comedy you will ever mm-hmm. watch. It has not been. It's not dated. You know, they're not making any kind of racist comments. They're not doing it. It's just plain damn good. It was funny because it was funny. But I've had the conversation, what do you mean you don't know who Phil Hartman is way too many times in my life? <laughs> oh. Mm. No, the, that that's actually a funny... I hadn't thought about that. Um, of course you have. Like, of course you have. He is not relevant in, in yeah. 2024. Like he, Phil Hartman has been dead since what ninety six, ninety seven, something like that. Ninety seven, I think. Like he is, he is not like affecting people in twenty twenty four. Like it in the sense that you would hear about him on a daily basis. What I mean by that also is, oh my god, he's a fucking figure. <laughs> You're not gonna know about that unless yeah. you know about that. But yeah. yes, he he has a he has a certain spot, and mm-hmm. he's. Oh. <laughs> Anyone knows that name. Yeah. I feel like I should be that guy that starts like the Instagram and the TikTok where that's just sharing clips of, of Phil Hartman. So this generation can get it. Eh, they wouldn't. It's a, it's a, yeah. it's a well, long you say that. You say that. You say that. But like, that's why Norm MacDonald is huge right now. It's because people like that, uh, that YouTube channel, I'm not Norm, started just like uploading compilations of Norm. Doing weekend update, doing, you know, roasts and whatnot. I didn't know about that. I like it. There's a ton of Norm MacDonald floating around on TikTok. It's really, he's blown up. Even before he passed, he had gotten kind of pretty big. Yeah. 
suddenly people knowing who he was. Um, anywho, Suicide Squad Isekai. They put out uh, a bunch of like little short trailers. What did you? I sent you some of those. Mm-hmm. What did you think? How you feeling? Solid no. <laughs> I have loved every second of it, and I'm super super excited about it. They also put out like the um. I hate being the such a dick. opening. Yeah, but no, that's mm, sorry. Like the opening credits, I am, I am so totally on board. It looks fantastic and weird and anime as hell. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm super super excited. This, the first three episodes, by the way, of Suicide Isekai will debut on Max on June 27th later this month, following installments release. Uh, sorry, with following installments released on a weekly basis. Um, so June 27th, we get episodes one through three, July 4th, episode four, July 11th, episode five, 18th is episode six, July 25th is episode seven, August 1st, episode eight, August 8th, episode nine, and August 15th, episode 10. And um, it'll be on cable in Japan on July 5th. So it will make a rare streaming first launch. I I, I think it looks cool. And if you're outside of the United States, it is uh, locked in several global distributors. Annie Plus and Laftel in South Korea is going to have it. Um, ADN in France and HBO Go in Southeast Asia, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. It looks cool to me. I'm sorry you're not into it. I like the look of it just fine in certain ways. No, I'm good. <laughs> um, I'll be hated for that comment. I, I, You'll be all right. I think... Uh, I think you'll be excited about this next bit, though. Kite Man, hell yeah, has a release date <laughs> July 18th on Max. That phrase alone. A spinoff of Harley Quinn. I just, I can't believe the words I was just told. And I love it. I know. I'm so happy. Why do you sound so sad? Well, I was happy about Kite Man, but then I realized that we still have a lot of stuff to talk about. And I realize I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get to this Watchmen hold animated on, movie on, trailer. On, on. Let's break the fourth wall here for a second. I gotta pee. All right, we let's read the break. last two little bits. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna come back. All right, let's talk about this Watchmen animated movie trailer, shall we? Mm-hmm. How'd you feel? Love it. <laughs> yeah me too um i saw a lot of people one complaining that it looked like um into the spider verse why i don't know maybe because there was something cg about it maybe i don't i also saw a lot of people complaining that it was it had too many cg elements and looked stiff and bad um i don't think it looked like into the spider verse i think it looked like and, and uh, uh, it does it did look somewhat 3D animated, but it also looked like Dave Gibbons artwork, like exactly. Yeah, just looked like a little like yeah. the comic. Um, wasn't I? Didn't really feel the the idea of it looking like Spider Verse. I didn't. The other thing, the other big complaint I saw was like, why are they even making this? It looks like it, they're just doing Zack Snyder. <laughs> it, I'm like, sweetie, baby, honey pie. Zack Snyder copied the fucking original fucking Watchmen panel for a panel, except for the end. It Zack Snyder looked like Watchmen. It hilariously enough, though, like for me, the only complaint is why are we doing this? Because I actually did enjoy those and don't necessarily yeah. have to have this in my life. But I eh. really enjoyed looking at this, and I'm going to enjoy watching it. Doesn't matter. I'm. Look, I'm always down for a new take. And you know what? If they do, I guess don't know what? how many Here's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches I've eaten. I've eaten in my life. That's all I'm saying. Here, here's here's a here's a reason that I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. One, uh, you bring in new actors; they're always going to have a slightly different take. It's going to be a new presentation. There is a reason that people keep remaking uh, Romeo and Juliet. There is a reason people keep doing fucking Our Town. You know, there's something people keep making the same shit over and over, remaking it because they have their interpretation. You went hilariously but, theater there, which is funny I know. for our relationship. I thought you'd like it. I know. I thought you'd appreciate it. But here's the thing, and this is how it helps comic book nerds. 
if you want someone in your life to watch the Watchmen TV show that Damon Lindelof did, that is a sequel to the book. Very stringently so. So it's not like you can just pull out Zack Snyder's Watchmen and go, watch this, because the ending is not the same as the book. Yeah. It's where it deviated very, very, very drastically. I mean, that part so was it, specifically from the book, not the movie at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you want someone to watch the show, Watchmen, and say, well, it's a sequel to the book, and then say, like I do, if you have someone in your life who's like, I'm not going to read a thing. Um, Hi. Cool. Watch this animated thing. <laughs> and they might be more... You know, prone to watch a, an animated thing than they would a, read a, a comic. My wife's not going to sit down and read a comic. She might sit down and watch the Watchmen animated movie. Yeah, and then watch the live action show that is a sequel to it. So if they get if they stay very 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 close to the comic and they you know do the comic, the comic has not been done not not in this entirety. Does really help. There's a lot of books that I wish they would um, put in some kind of like digestible form so I could show people mm-hmm. like, no, no, I, I, I know this seems like a lot to consume, but just these 15 minutes of something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also Watchmen chapter one, cause this, this animated movie trailer was for chapter one. Yeah. Chapter one got an R rating for violent content and some graphic nudity. It'll be the blue dick, you know? Well, you know, it might be, It'll be a blue dick. It, you know, it might be people, a couple of people having sex inside of an owl. Possible. possible hovercraft. Possible. <laughs> be uh, over to Batman Cape Crusader. So uh, they put out like a little teaser that was narrated by the, the new actor playing Batman. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hamish Linklater. We know him from um, Newsroom. Mm-hmm. Good mm-hmm. actor. Uh, honestly, though, uh, I'm I'm excited to watch this show, but that Batman voice is ass. <laughs> that was a terrible Batman voice, and it did not help when they showed him at the end behind the mic and reminded me of what that man looked like. And I was like, mm, yeah, no, hmm. this is this is garbage. This voice is awful. But on the other hand, they did in that trailer that little teaser announce McKenna Grace, who's amazing, and. Uh, Reed Scott and Dane Donahue and Gary Anthony Williams, Jason Watson, Watkins, John DiMaggio, our beloved, mm-hmm. uh, Crystal Joy Brown, Michelle C. Bonilla, uh, Eric Morgan Stewart, Tom Kenny. We know Tom Kenny from SpongeBob, <laughs> among other things. I'll punch Mini you. Driver. I'll punch you over that. <laughs> what? <laughs> or Tom Kenny from what, SpongeBob. What, what, what you got to say, man? <laughs> He was so many things. <laughs> I know. I know. I specifically said that to bug you. Uh, Mini Driver, who's amazing and everything. <laughs> huh? You got your reaction. Right. <laughs> uh, Diedrich Bader. Is he from SpongeBob? To, probably. Yeah, he's right. Diedrich Bader from the Drew Carey <laughs> show. <laughs> Not Batman the Brave and the Bold or Harley Quinn. I want you to be like Christian Bell. From a Old Spice commercial? Yeah. <laughs> Christian Bale. No, actually, he'd be from, from Irish Newsies. Springs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Jamie Chung, who was on mm-hmm. Gotham. And this is exciting. Christina Ricci. And we don't know who everyone's playing, except we do know that Ricci is Selena Kyle slash Catwoman. Yeah, Jamie Chung is Harley Quinn. And Diedrich Bader is Harvey Dent slash Two-Face. So, no, I'm not excited about uh, Hamish Linklater playing Batman. I think he sounds awful. Uh, great actor on the newsroom. Sounds terrible here. Maybe I just need to get used to it, but for now, I'm just like, ooh, no. No, please. I think you'll... God, no. Look, I think you'll like him, and if you specifically go back to the scene where he reinterprets the interview on newsroom, mm. you'll specifically like him. Maybe. I need to rewatch that anyway. Might be a reason to... So here's something that's really cool, though. Uh, in a recent interview with Vanity Fair, Bruce Tim, co-creator of Cape Crusader, 
was kind of talking about how the series is going to offer a new approach to some of Batman's antagonists. So he says uh, of Harvey Dent slash Two-Face as played by Diedrich Bader. Well, he will begin, begin the show as a corrupt district attorney. He says, we thought, what if he starts off as kind of a schnook? And then when he gets his face disfigured for the first time in his life, he actually feels empathy for other people. I kind of like that. Too. I dig. I dig that. Yeah. take. That is fresh. Yeah. That's fresh in a way that I didn't expect from this. And we've already seen I mean, that they're doing something weird with Harley. That's the moment where he fucks off. Yeah. Yeah. I dig it. Uh, Harley, Harley Quinn, meanwhile, will not only have a more anti-heroic bent to her masked persona, she will be in a romantic relationship with Renee Montoya, a dynamic that has not previously been portrayed in other media. He says the idea of putting them together was something that seemed kind of natural. We figured as a psychiatrist, her clientele are some of the richest, most powerful men in Gotham City. And they dump all of their crap on her. It's driving her crazy. She hears all this stuff, but because of psychiatrist client privilege, she can't do anything about it. She can't tell anybody. We figured some of these guys have probably confessed some really horrible things to her. And she's just like, well, I can't just turn this guy loose out in the streets, but I can't turn him into the cops either. I'm excited for both of those approaches. I want more. I mean, truly, haven't we all been there? Probably. It- I've felt like that about several co-workers over the years. <laughs> Genuinely, what I was thinking, honestly. Uh huh. <laughs> and you and I have worked together for a lot, so like, let's I just may name or names. May not be talking to one of them now. There's this guy. Beep. This guy. Beep. This yeah. guy. Beep. There's one of those guys who beep. might still be harboring jealousy that we're doing this show beep. together. <laughs> that you're doing beep. it with me and not him. Oh lord. Beep. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> no but no but i promise i'll stop uh so i mentioned earlier that i've really got to catch up with my adventures with superman dude they just announced season three mm-hmm. i look i don't know anything about the show i ain't gonna try to, i ain't trying to spoil it i ain't trying to spoil it but i all i know and this is all i know is like like with rick on rick and morty there is a council of multiversal loises and I don't know how that works or why it's working. <laughs> but I know it's a thing. Yeah, I like it. And I say that to you the same in the same spirit as you told me to watch Fringe because they're gearing up for a war with an, with an alternate universe. Mm. <laughs> and how that propelled me into the universe made me watch the show. To actually Jason. do that. <laughs> There's a council of Lois. Fair enough. No, uh, um... <laughs> of all things, uh, uh, the people you talked to on Discord, of all things, were like the reason I was going to watch Adventures, but ended up watching Dead Boy Detectives instead. Mm. And haven't found the time to go back for that. Is is our DC on screen Discord still yeah. a thing? I don't know what the login is, and I haven't seen it oh, in years. Hi. <laughs> Maybe you should help me out with that. <laughs> I didn't know it was still going. Oh. We all hate you there. Yeah. Really? Oh. It's sad. That that does sound sad. Or it would if I gave a yep. shit. I haven't locked in. Over to mm-hmm. Blue Beetle. There's a Blue Beetle animated series in development. I do love that. How much is that going to be tied in, though? I mean, he well, did say. Capital he. Let's see. Let's see. Deadline is reporting that Warner Brothers Animation and DC Studios are working on a Blue Beetle animated series with Miguel Puga. Uh... He's been working on the project as well since early this year. Puga is the showrunner of the series, while Christian Christian Martinez is writing the series. While Blue Beetle is heading into a new frontier, he will have some familiar friends along for the ride. Those familiar friends include B- Blue Beetle director and screenwriter Angel Manuel Soto and Gareth Dunnett Alcoser, as well as executive producer John Richard and Gallen Weissman, with Weissman overseeing the series for DC Studios. As for the cast, the report states that things are still in flux, but multiple people from the original film have been approached for the animated project, and DC has received a positive response in regards to returning. Uh, the animated series will build on the events of the film, but is seeking to tell its own story. If the show is successful, the report states it could lead to a return for the character on the big screen. That is... That's a lot. Isn't yeah. it? 
I don't know how an animated series could be successful enough to justify putting him back on the big screen when it flopped like it did. Yeah. Yeah. That's like rough. this. This is a, I'm not shocked that it's animated situation, but I was hoping you would just do like a booster gold series and have him as part of it and tell that story. And if we see them on screen again, it's like a crisis on infinite earth situation where they're just kind of with the rest of the justice league and that's it. Or an end game. If yeah. you like either would be better, frankly. Yeah. But whatever. We'll see. We'll see what's going on. I don't know. I'm trying not to be too too much of a dick. Sorry, Hamish. I still feel bad. Yeah. That could go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guess what? Batman Ninja is getting a sequel. Speaking of anime projects that you have no mm-hmm. interest in. Uh, Batman Ninja versus Yakuza League is, is coming. <laughs> I mean, I'll just be over here and... You, I know. You let me know. <laughs> I, dude, I didn't like Batman Ninja. It was interesting on a level. Like It was fine. I want an action figure of it, but I, does, I didn't like love the, the movie. It was just super weird. Love you. Love him. I'll see you back in a second. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Did you watch the video of them making fun of Black Adam in the Multiverses game? I did. Like, okay, so one of Joker's skins... And I, I guess it's still free to play, um, but the multiverses. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a DC game. If you don't know, it's a DC game. Well, it's not a DC game. It's a Warner Brothers game. It's a bunch of different people from all over the place, all the different universes, like people from Game of Thrones, DC, but you know, Rick and Morty, all this shit. Um, one of Joker's skins in the game is the Batman who laughs. And when the Batman who laughs faces off against Black Adam. He says he opened his opening line is, weren't you supposed to be rearranging the hierarchy or something? <laughs> it was a good bit. I laughed my dick off when I saw that. I thought it was. I didn't think it was real. I thought somebody on TikTok had like fucked around, put that together. <laughs> yeah. And then I found out it was real. I was like, oh, oh, God, that's so yeah. good. Those lines apparently are genuine. And half of them could have been written by anyone who knows that this is some combination of Joker and Batman. Half Mm -hmm. of them, like it feels like were ghost written by like Snyder himself. Mm -hmm. Scott Snyder. Yeah. But yeah, no, the, some of those in lines, uh, all of the references to like, Oh, Bruce, they were hilarious, man. Uh, Mm -hmm. Somebody in this universe knows the gag and it, it's, it's worth, it's worth the time, man. It, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the shit out of that. I need to play that game. <laughs> I don't know if I want to actually play the game or not, but what I do know is that was funny. That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get distracted and do something other than play the mm. game, but that much is certain. Fair enough. Well, man, um, what do you think? You want to call it? That's all the news I have. Yeah. We've been at this for a little over two hours now. As far as recording goes. Two, three minutes max once we cut it down. But yeah, I'll call it. Yeah, sure. (laughs) Six at the outside. Cool, man. Cool. Well, um, I guess we're supposed to be coming back with like another something for the uh, thing. Wow. That was really good, Dave. Um, (laughs) Let me look up these tomorrow verse. God, I didn't do my due diligence here. Just out of the park out of the park yeah, right now tomorrow verse i know tomorrow verse shit is what yeah. we need we're trying to catch up on that uh let's see let's see what yeah. we got yeah. what we got y'all um looks like we need to watch mm-hmm. legion mm-hmm. of superheroes mm-hmm. but i Ooh, think i fun. believe yeah it does um i believe we had a couple of shorts coming up the that we needed to get to before that so mm. it'll be that it'll be the the two shorts and that if I can find out what the I, two shorts are certainly I can't find oh here we go here we go those, mm. yeah that, those two oh, oh, yeah oh gotcha oh, you see them um, nope Got him. oh no okay <laughs> I'm gonna vamp for a bit hey on Patreon <laughs> mm, I don't I don't think this is real. I want to leave us. 
<laughs> All right. We'll be back with something, y'all. Until then, keep some DC on your screen. Oh, <laughs>